I'm Judy Gasson, and I'm a professor of medicine and biological chemistry here at UCLA. For me, this is an incredibly exciting time to be leading a cancer center. There are 12 and a half million cancer survivors in our country, and the percentage of people who will survive a minimum of five years after their diagnosis is as high as 70%, which is really remarkable because years ago, cancer, the diagnosis of cancer was commensurate with a death sentence, and it no longer is, nor should it be. We have FDA-approved targeted therapies that are able to specifically kill cells while having very little effect on the normal cells of the patient's body. The research that's been done in, in stem cells and understanding the pathways that drive the growth of normal stem cells has given us very robust insights into understanding the individual cells in the tumor that are giving rise to that tumor. And so new generations of targeted therapies aimed at the pathways that control stem cell growth will hopefully be effective in types of cancer where we don't have an effective therapy today. One of the areas that is brand new in the Cancer Center is our nanotechnology program area. And nanotechnology, as you know, is about things that are very, very, very small. We are using nanotechnology in two ways. One way is to design better therapies for the future, and the other way is to design better ways to detect cancer cells more easily and sooner in the progress of the disease. We have had wonderful collaboration with our colleagues in the imaging field here at UCLA. Traditionally, a patient would be diagnosed with cancer and they would be given several rounds of treatment and then they would be evaluated to see whether the treatment had worked or not. What we can now do, and studies are, are bearing this out, is diagnose the patient, give them one round of treatment, and then use the non-invasive molecular imaging that we have to take a picture, essentially, of the biochemistry inside that tumor and inform the physician whether the patient is responding. And if not, not to lose that valuable time, but to go on to the next line of treatment. The most important thing to us is that our research here have an impact and that's called translational research, when discoveries are made in the laboratory, but they're very rapidly translated into research that's going on in the clinic with novel targeted therapies. UCLA is the best translational cancer center in the country, and we have the history to prove it. We have participated in groundbreaking work that has led to the FDA approval of drugs like Herceptin, Gleevec, and Avastin that are affecting the lives and survival of cancer patients throughout the world. We want to be promoting the brightest minds, people that are early in their career, who are looking at something a little bit differently and that they have a great idea. We can't do that with any other kind of funding other than philanthropic funding. And we are so fortunate to have our community of supporters who year in and year out provide us with that funding so that we can identify that next spark, that next great idea, that next young investigator who's really going to have an impact in this disease. We're here every day fighting to do a better job for cancer patients, and we wouldn't be able to do it without you.